are there any kind of red flags mm. that actors should look at as well? Mm. Because there are like faulty yeah. agents, right? Mm. Well, I would say, first of all, having an agent who's willing to communicate with you. So if you came to your agent with doubts, concerns, whether personal, whether about the work, whatever it is, if they're not willing to have that conversation with you or, you know, shrug it off or make you feel bad in that interaction, mm -hmm. then it's probably not the best dynamic. Um, I would say in that sense, also actors should keep in mind that agents are usually very busy and also have a lot going on in their own lives. So a short reply to something isn't necessarily a shove off or anything. Um, but yeah, then, you know, if, if the client were to reach out and say, well, let's, let's have a chat. Can I call you? Can we set up a meeting? Sometimes, for example, myself, I'll say, I can't talk right now, but I'll try and call you later or let's book in a slot for, for in two days time, we can do a Zoom call, whatever it all come to the office, we'll have a coffee. Um, if, if that's the kind of relationship you would like to have with your agent and you're not able to, then you're probably with the wrong agent. An agent who is not asking, like say for example, you turn down a few tapes for some reason and the agent is not asking you, is there a circumstance we should be aware of? That, you know, is there a reason that you're turning down these tapes? Either, for example, maybe, you know, it's McDonald's tape and you turn it down and I don't know why you've turned it down. It might just be that you're vegan and mm -hmm. I need to know that you're vegan and you're not going to promote mm. a meat product. Um, but if I'm just like, okay, <laughs> mm. I don't ask you why, <laughs> then I'm not really doing my job properly. Mm. Or it could be that, you know, you've actually just worked double shifts all week and you could not find the time to do the tape. I also need to know that because mm -hmm. I need to be able to work with you and support you and go, okay, I'll ask for an extension on this tape for you or let me hold off on submissions for you for a week or two until you find your feet again. So if the agent also doesn't seem interested in, in why you are present or not present, then it's worth reaching out. Mm -hmm. I think if as a client you've communicated clearly what you want your focus to be and you're constantly being made or asked to audition for things that you don't want to do and made to this is the key not not about being asked to do jobs that you maybe haven't thought about before but if you're made to feel bad for turning something down that you were clear is not your focus that's also I wouldn't say a good thing because that's why yeah. you get to know your clients and they say this is for me this isn't for me there will be opportunities where we go you know what you said you don't want to do commercials but this is actually being directed by so and so director and it pays 10 grand and we think it's a really good opportunity for you we might have that conversation mm -hmm. but if you've said to us look i i don't kiss anyone on screen and we're like you need to kiss someone on screen for 10 grand i can't believe you're turning 10 grand down and you're like but i've i've told you i don't do this you know that's also so just having someone who understands and supports mm -hmm. your morals and your focus um and then make it, you know, if you've, again, I, I, it's difficult to say because I'd like to think there's no agents doing this, but, you know, not, not reading contracts properly and stuff. So if you've ended up on a few dodgy jobs where the circumstances are dodgy and you've, you've struggled either on set or afterwards for your pay and all that kind of stuff, and the contract has bound you where there's nothing the agent can do, that's also a red flag. Now keep in mind, the agent can read the contract, it can be a good contract and things can still go wrong. But then it's the agent's responsibility to reach out to production and try and resolve that. Mm. And we're not always able to you know, resolve it, you know, in an ideal way because we still have to work with production, with casting, we have to get them to work with us. But ultimately there are standards, there are industry standards that they need to abide by. And if your agent isn't fighting for that, you know, isn't chasing the extra usage they've done without paying you or isn't speaking to production about the fact that you were injured on set and nobody did anything about it or 
you know, if someone's being asked to work 10 days in a row, but the contract says they are only required to work seven days in a row, then the agent making sure that they're either given back time or compensated or telling the client they have the, the right to refuse, you know, working 10 days in a row because that's not in the contract, all those kinds of things. Um, your agent has to be willing to fight for those kinds of things mm -hmm. for you. And again, if they're not, if they're just telling you to brush it off, you know, and are not addressing those things, then, then that's mm -hmm. a red flag.